Jaya Yasoda Nanda Na Jaya Braja Janara Jana To Samya Jaya Braja Janara Jana To Samya Jaya Yasoda Nanda Na Jaya Braja Janara
Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Good morning to the devotees from Sri Mayakar. So we're reading from Grantara Srimad Bhagavatam on this auspicious day of Akadasi. We've been reading from chapter 29, teachings of Lord Kapila Dev, the explanation of devotional service by Lord Kapila. We're on text number nine, continuing from uh, Sunday. And I think we may continue this again on Friday, the same verse. We'll see. Vishayan apisandhaya yasha aishvaryam evava archadav archayadyomam Pitak Bhava Sarajasa. The worship of deities in the temple by a separatist with a motive for material enjoyment, fame, and opulence is devotion and the mode of passion. Srila Prabhupada's purport. Uh, reading from something of it. The word separatist must be understood carefully. The Sanskrit words in this connection are Binadrik, which is referring to the previous verse and Pitag Bhava, which is this verse. A separatist is one who sees his interest as separate from that of the Supreme Lord. Mixed devotees or devotees in the modes of passion and ignorance think that the interest of the Supreme Lord is supplying the orders of the devotee. <laughs> the interest of such devotees is to draw from the Lord as much as possible for their sense gratification. This is a separatist mentality. Actually, pure devotion is explained in the previous chapter. The mind of the Supreme Lord and the mind of the devotee should be dovetailed. A devotee should not wish anything but to execute the desire of the Supreme. 
That is oneness. Gauranga gana gocha galaru haram. Gauranga guda tama gopya kopa briksham. Gopala gada rati dam yati singha gora. Govinda deshika varam satatam namami. Vansha kopa tarubhascha. Kripa sindhu bhyayevacha. Patitanam pavani. Vaishnavibhyo namo Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasari Gora Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama, Rama, Hare, Hare. So, as we were speaking on, on Sunday, uh, Lord Kapiladev in this chapter is speaking something about what is pure bhakti. And to understand pure bhakti, we also have to understand what is mixed bhakti. It's a very, very important thing for us. It's a very important thing for all religions throughout the world, as we commented on Sunday, that religion has a bad name because of people who have wrong motivations in worship of the Lord. And many, many people become atheists, not necessarily for big philosophical reasons, but because they're so annoyed with the so-called theists. Because actually, you can't really have an atheist without a theist. An atheist just means someone who's opposed to theists. It means someone with a chip on their block. So this verse speaks again about three motivations for Rajarsik Bhakta, Vishaya. They want some sense gratification, Yasa, they want some fame, and Aishvarja, they want some opulence. Mm -hmm. And we spoke something from Brihan Naradiya Purana from the first canto, chapter 15, which speaks about three types of uh, Rajarsik Bhaktas the Adama, Rajarsik Bhakta, the Majam, and the Uttam, which correspond with these three things found in this verse today. We also read something from Srila Prabhupada's verse in Purport in the uh, Gita, chapter 17, text 18. Prabhupada says, Sometimes penance and austerity are executed to attract people and receive honor, respect, and worship from others. Persons in the mode of passion arrange to be worshipped by subordinates and let them wash their feet and offer riches. Such arrangements artificially made by the performance of penances are to be considered in the mode of passion. Mm -hmm. And in this connection, we began speaking on Sunday about an example of this, which is Kalia, excuse me, Keshi, uh, who is one of the, uh, the killing of Keshi is one of the naimitic leelas, meaning uh, temporary or occasional pastimes which Krishna performs in Braj. And Bhaktivinoda Thakur, in both Krishna Samhita and his book, Chaitanya Sikshamrita, has described this, uh, th these different nainitic leelas represent different obstacles in our road back to Braj. And Keshi represents a very formidable one. Keshi represents the uh, pride as a devotee. Bhaktivinoda Thakur describes in Krishna Sanhita, Gota, Gota, Katma hatastena keshi raja madrosara. Maturam gantukamena krishnena kangsavarina. When Krishna, the enemy of Kangsa, decided to go to Matura, the horse demon Keshi, who personifies the vanity of political ambition, was killed. Bhaktivinoda Thakur also says that Braj represents pure love, and Matura represents when love becomes mixed with knowledge. And he says in uh, Chaitanya Sikshamrita, as we were reading the other day, Keshi Vada, the killing of Keshi, represents Ami Bodo Bhakta. I am a big devotee, O oh, Acharya. And I am an Acharya, A Abhiman. This kind of uh, attitude, this pride, Aishvarja Bhuti, O oh, uh, Parti Vahankara Varjana. Uh, this uh, mentality that I am a very opulent and powerful person, Aishvarja, the false ego that uh, 
And Partivaim, like the king, the lord of the earth, has to be given up. And we spoke about how Keshi's not invited to Brindavan. Keshi just shows up and he comes running into Brindavan. Just like some religionists, they come running into the Sangha of transcendentalists and they make a big noise, as we'll hear about Keshi, and it scares the residents there. And Keshi's also uh, one of the very last demons in uh, Braj Lila. And here Bhaktivinod says, Maturam gantukamena, Krishnena kangsavarina. That uh, when Keshi came, then Krishna left, left Vrindavan. And so in a similar way, we see that our purpose, as uh, Shama Mataji was saying nicely the other day, is to establish Vrindavan villages all over the world. And, but those Vrindavan villages are spoiled when people come running into them and demand respect as being great devotees like Keshi. And then what happens, it frightens the residents there and Krishna leaves quietly. He goes somewhere else. And that Sangha becomes bereft of Krishna. Three chapters later in Krishna Sanhita, Bhaktivinoda speaks again about Keshi. A Keshi, he says, Bhakti te josamridya tu svotkarsha gyanavanara kadachit dushta buddhya tu Keshi grinam avanmanyate. Keshi, a demon in the form of a horse, personifies a practitioner's conception of being more expert than others in devotional service. This is his pride. I'm more expert than other people. It's significant also that Keshi represents a horse because according to Srila Prabhupada and, and stated in different places, the most beautiful of all the animals is the horse. And so someone comes and they're a beautiful devotee. Sometimes literally, physically, they want to be very, very beautiful. And they have this conception, this ahankara, this uh, mentality, this false ego, that I'm more expert than other people in devotional service. And therefore, Bhaktivinoda says, when he comes to Braj, he creates a great disturbance. As a Vaishnava gradually begins proclaiming his own superiority, uh, gradually, a mentality of disrespect for the Lord arises, and the devotee falls from his position. Therefore, it is most important to prevent this evil mentality from entering the heart, even if one is expert in devotional service. A Vaishnava will never give up the quality of humility. If one does so, there is a need for killing Keshi. This is the 18th obstacle to enter into Braj. And therefore, it's described hmm, that Shushushaya um, Bhajana Vignam. Someone may be expert Bhajan Vigyan in Bhajan and worshiping the Lord, but the symptom of that expertise is, the real expertise, Nindadi Shunar Hidam, that their heart is completely free from the propensity to criticize others. There's no Pride there, this humility. And ipsita sangalabhya, Rupa Goswami says, that's the association we want. Or another way to, to phrase it is that this is the association which will create Vrindavan villages. Association which is bereft of, the, of persons like Keshi. Now, the word Keshi has some interesting meanings. Keshi is derived from the term Kesha. Kesha means hair. Ke mashtake sete. That those things which rest, sete, on the head, k, k means the head, that's called kesha. So the verbal root here is c, which is resting or sleeping, and kesha, the word, is formed by combined by putting these two together. Keshi means prasasta kesha santyasya, someone who has sufficient hair. <laughs> they have lots of hair. According to Monia Williams, when he speaks about Keshi, Keshi says means a horse. Keshi also, he says, means the best, excellent, or most prominent of a class. Just like what is the most prominent thing in our body is our hair. 
Uh, they say that, that if a man can shave his head, that's a sign of great boldness. I remember when I was growing up, there was a, a television show we watched, I can't, Kojak, that was his name. And this person had a shaved head. And he, at that time, nobody had a shaved head. Now it's very popular, especially I see in, in Hungary. A lot of young people, they shave their head. It's kind of a strong thing. So uh, your hair is something which is very prominent in you. Huh? Hair represents our vanity. Srila Prabhupada writes in his purport in the fourth canto, chapter 28, text 44, he says, hair combing is one of the main businesses of women. <laughs> and he says in another place, when, when a woman can give up combing her hair, that means she's given up her vanity. There's a common saying that, uh, I'm a queen crowned in my curls. <laughs> my hair is my vanity. And so keshi, the word keshi means hair. Keshi means someone who's very vain. Keshi means someone who's very proud of being a devotee. And keshi is also one of the representatives of kamsa. And according to Thakur Bhaktivinoda in Krishna Sanghita, kamsa represents the head of mundane religion. And so he sends all these different demons to stop real religion in the form of bhakti, in the form of a worship of Krishna. So Kangsa, Kesi has an intimate relationship with Kangsa. In the Garga Sanghita, in the first canto, it said that once Kangsa was very proud of his strength. When you're very proud of your strength, when you're very proud of your knowledge, when you're very proud of your religiosity, you have to show it off, like Kesi. And so Kangsa became eager to fight, and we, we went to Mahimashmati city, and there he met and fought with the sons of the king of Mahishmati, whose names were Chanura, Mushta, Kakuta, Sala, and Toshala. He challenged them, those powerful wrestlers, he said, look, let's have a fight. And if you win, I'll become your servant. And if I win, you'll become my servants. And Kangsa defeated them. He made them all his servants, and then he was still eager, he wants to fight some more. So then he went to Mount uh, Pavasana, where he met the, the gorilla Davida, who is a long discussion. Jiva Goswami says some very interesting things about Davida, because Davida was, is, is an eternal associate of the Lord. He's mentioned in, in, uh, in uh, Valmiki Ramayana, he was one of the principal associates of Lord Ramachandra. But how he became a demon is a very interesting but separate discussion. Then Kangsa went to the Rishyamuk forest where there was a great demon living, whose name was Keshi, who had the form of a horse. And Garga Sanghita describes that he would make a loud sound like thunder. This is the nature of Keshi, they're saying. He has a form of a horse, he's very proud of his hair, and he makes a big, big noise. So Kangsa began to punch that horse again and again. He subdued it, and then Kangsa jumped on top of him and rode him to Mount Mahendra. And then, uh, it's described there that aided by Chanura and Mushtaka and all these different wrestlers and Palumbasur and Bakasur and Davida and Keshi and other personalities, he attacked Indra's city of Amaravati. Mm -hmm. And Keshi helped Kangsa to defeat so many different kings in that. The Bhagavatam describes the pastime of Keshi in nine verses. In chapter 37, uh, I'd like to examine a little bit of that and see how it is that uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur has given a very beautiful commentary about Keshi and how it's very appropriate by what is said in the Bhagavatam. So the story of Keshi begins in the first verse of the 37th chapter, the 10th canto. It's said there, Keshi tu kangsaparita kurai mahim mahaharo nijarayan mano jiva sata Shukadeva Goswami said that the demon Keshi, who was sent by Kangsa, appeared in Braj as a great horse. He was running with the speed of the mind. Huh? And very interesting. Huh? It's described there that, that Mana Java, his mind was the speed, of the, his speed was like the, as fast as the mind. And this is the nature of someone who wants to advertise himself as a devotee very much in the mode of passion. Their mind is going like anything. Huh? And they're coming like a huge horse. Huh? 
And the Bhagavatam specifically says, Sata Vaduta, that his hairs scattered even the clouds. And the Vimanas are the demigods, the airplanes of the demigods. And it said there in particular that He Sita Bishita Kilam. That He Sita means his loud braying, his loud noise making. Bishita Kila. It frightened everyone who was there. And Jiva Goswami, Lagwa Vaishnava Toshini, he says that because with his hair, Sata, he scattered the clouds and the, the airplanes of the demigods, also indicating that he creates a disturbance for the devatas. Therefore, he's called Keshi, or someone who has hairs. And his hair is indicated as pride, which simply creates a disturbance. And the next verse, Sukadeva Goswami describes. Tantra Shayantam Bhagavan Sagokulam Tadeshi Tarvala Vigunitam Budam Atmanam Ajo Mrigayantam Agranir Upava Yatsa Vyanadan Migrindravat. When Krishna saw how this demon was frightening his village of Gokul, Krishna came forward to meet him. And as Kesi shook the clouds with his tail searching for Krishna, when Krishna stood before him, he called the horse with a similar sound of name. And then Kesi replied, Mugendavat, huh? with a sound like a lion. According to apt Sanskrit, the English dictionary, another meaning of the word Kesi, by the way, is lion. It's a synonym for, for the lion. Huh? So Kesi is coming in like a lion and causing all kinds of terror in uh, Braj. In the Varaha Purana this past time, it said, Ganga Satta Gunam Punya Yatta Keshi Nipati Ta. That that place where Krishna killed Keshi is a hundred times more pure than the Ganga. The Hadivamsa Purana also describes this past time. Nishabda Nasai Nishabda Nasara Krudha Sakadachit dinagame jagama gosha sambhasam nodita kala dharmana tamdrisva nudruvur gopa shriya bischa sisibtaha. He said that with the sound of a lion, angry Keshi, who's impelled by time, came to Braj one morning, seeing him all the cowherd people, along with the women and infants, they ran away. So this is how Akeshi enters into Braj, uh, impelled by time, impelled by his destiny to be destroyed by Krishna, writhing like a great lion, making a sound like a lion. He comes in the morning, uh, just like the rising of the early part of the day, and all the Bijbasis, when they see him, they run away out of fear. Uh, the Vishnu Purana also describes his pastime, and there it said, Trahi uh, Trahiti Govinda, Shutvatesham tato vacha. Satoya jalad advana gambiram idam uktavan. Alantra sena gopala keshina kim. Bayaturai bavidir gopijati yar. Virya viryam vilopyate. Kim ano kim anenalpa sarena. Hasitauta pakarina. Daiteya bala vahenya vagata dushta vajina. That Krishna, when he heard the words of the bridge basis, what were they saying? Huh? Trahi, trahi govinda, save us, save us. Shutvatesham huh? tatovacha. When he heard that, Krishna, huh? with a deep voice, as deep as a thundercloud, he said, eh, my dear bridge bossies, don't have any fear hmm, of this Keshi. He says, what is it? Huh? Because of this Keshi, now this, he says, uh, Keshi Kim, right? don't have any fear. Bhavadir, Gopajitir, Yai, Virya, Viryam, Vilopyate. Has all your Virya, all your courage disappeared because of this horse coming here and making this loud noise? He says, what use? Yeah. What, what's the use of this stupid horse? He has no strength. 
He's a very proud fellow, and he just gallops around, huh? and he takes all his strength from the demons. A very significant Krishna's words. In other words, Krishna, we understand from this pastime that the devotees, they're not afraid for themselves, but they're afraid for Krishna. The Harivamsa Purana describes a similar thing, that when Kesi attacked Krishna, all the bridge bhasis became terrified, and they started calling out to Krishna. Uh -huh. Gopa Krishna Muchur Hitasena, Krishna's Tata Nakal Desha Sahasa Te Halai Hayadama. Oh Krishna, don't go near that Kesi, that demon. You're just a small child. Kesi's very, very powerful. You should stay away from him. So we see that, that the bridge bossies fear, it's not for themselves. Their fear is for Krishna. And what is Krishna responding? Harivangsa Purana says that, that their fear was not for themselves, it was for Krishna. And uh, Krishna responds in the Vishnu Purana basically saying, don't worry, everything is okay. Huh? You're worried about me. Sometimes the devotees, when they see someone entering into the assembly of Vaishnavas, like Kesi, like the Kesi demon, making a big, big noise and just wanting to proudly assert himself that I know more about devotion than everyone else, as Bhaktivinoda says in, in uh, Krishna Sanghita. Ami Bodo Bhakta, oh Acharya, I am an Acharya, I am a great devotee. Then those devotees become afraid, but they're not afraid for themselves. They're afraid for Krishna, they're afraid for the mission of Guru. What will happen when some rascal like this comes and he goes and advertises himself as being a bridge bossy, as being a devotee, everything will go wrong? And then Krishna responds and says, don't worry, everything is okay. Uh, so I'm going to go a little bit late today. It's a codice. Is that all right? Do we have permission from the devotees? Or is it better if we stop on time? I can stop here. Okay, so uh, we'll read just a few more verses. In the third verse of this, this 37th chapter, it's described there. Satam nisham ya bimukko makena kam. Satam nisham ya bimukko makena kam. Piban iva bradravat atya marshana. Jaghana padyam aravinda lochanam. Durasadas chanda javodaratyaya. That when Keshi came before him, this is interesting. When Keshi is representing this person who's very proud of being a devotee, when he actually comes before Krishna and he's furious, Keshi's full of rage and anger. And it said, Mukena come, that his mouth is open like the sky. In other words, Keshi is someone who has a big mouth. He makes a lot of noise. It's a very particular quality of him. Makena come. Piban Ivabradavad. That he's as though he's drinking up the sky, and in this mood, he's running forward to Krishna. Ati Amarshana, he's very, very angry. Uh -huh. So angry because such a person wants some respect, and he begins to strike Krishna. In the same way that such a false devotee also strikes Krishna by striking the devotees. So I'm going to stop there. There is a lot to discuss about this topic. Um, um, but I'd like to see if anybody has any reflections or comments uh, before we uh, finish. Oh, what's going on here? Any, any reflections or anything from anybody? Let me look down here, anybody online? Jagadambika Mataji is here. Jagadambika, we're sitting here with Sachi Tanoi Prabhu and Shama Priya Mataji's. <laughs> Marupati saying, don't stop. I hope we never stop. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, Subal Sham Prabhu Hare Krishna. <laughs> yeah. 
So uh, Marupati says, holier than thou. Yes, that's the nature of Keshi. Keshi causes such a disturbance amongst the society of Vaishnava. Does anybody here have any reflections or comments? Such a tonight, yeah. you so want to come up here? To get, they won't be able to hear you. Thank you, Prabhu. When in any religious group or in our experience in our group, when someone shows up with that mentality, it might not be necessarily thinking that that person is a, like a demonic or is Keshi personified or something, but isn't it that it can be also is just influence with certain amount of mentality? It's influence. It's not, it's that mentality of, of Keshi might be there, but it's not that. How can I explain this? It's not a, that we should think, oh, here's a demon, or use the word demon in that person, because he can, that person can change. Maybe you can explain a little bit. Yeah. We'll, we'll speak more about that in our next session, how Keshi actually was a devotee, according to Garga Samhita and according to uh, Brahma Vivarta Purana. We won't have time, I don't think, to go so much deeply into that. But uh, that's the mood of the devotees. They see that this person, there's some hope for them. There's hope for everyone. I like to think if there's hope for me, then <laughs> I, I should also be kind to other people. We should see like that. I, I have one devotee is asking here how to deal with such people when we are with them. I mean, when we're forced to deal with them. The Bhagavatam describes this, and, and this is also intimated in this pastime. The 11th canto of the Bhagavatam says, Ishvari Tadadini Shu Bali Seshu Visat Sucha Prema Maitri Kupopeksha Ya Karoti Samadhyama. That someone who's a Madhyamadikari has to behave like this. Uh, he loves the Lord, he makes friends with the devotees, he's kind to innocent people, Bali Seshu, and Dvisatsu, people who are envious, like, like Keshi. And Prabhupada, by the way, he says, there are many envious persons in this Krishna conscious movement. He says that in Chaitanya Charitamrita. So this also has to do with Satchitanoi Prabhu's question, too. If there are so many envious persons in the society, what should we do? Maybe we should just kick them out. But as we mentioned the other day, Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati, when someone challenged him and said, Maharaj, you have so many bogus people in your society, he said, yes, I know. He said, but if I drive them out, where would they go? At least here there's some hope for them. There's even some hope for Keshi, <laughs> as we'll hear later. So, but if someone is dvisatsu, dvisatsu means uh, being a drick. It's another synonym for being a drick. It's someone who, who's a separatist. Dvisatsu means duality. They're seeing duality. They're seeing something separate from Krishna, separate from the devotees. How do we deal with such a person uh, we practice upeksha, we practice neglect. And what does that neglect mean? It doesn't mean that we criticize them online, doesn't mean that we punch them in the nose or kick them out, but it means we just ignore them, which is exactly what Krishna told the bridge bhasis to do in Vishnu Purana. He said, don't worry about it, everything's okay, you just relax, I'll take care of this. <laughs> and that's the nature of the Vaishnavas. They, their solution for everything is Krishna, is Krishna Bhakti. If Krishna Bhakti is not our solution, then you're in a different mo movement. You're somewhere else. You, you, you're not in Prabhupada's movement. Srila Prabhupada said, this chanting should go on instead of meetings, resolutions, dissolutions, revolutions, and no solutions. Because anything other than chanting, it means no solution. There should be chanting. This is a solution in our movement. And Krishna teaches us this, as in his words in the Vishnu Purana, to the Brijbhasis, don't worry, everything's going to be fine. Madhupati Prabhu is saying, Atman, we pray for them. Well, if we're, if we're a gentle-hearted saint like Madhupati Prabhu, then certainly we should. Uh, we should. We should feel compassion for everyone. Otherwise, we might start becoming like Keshi ourself and thinking and wanting to advertise, yes, I'm very tolerant. I'm very, very humble to see all of you. I'm tolerating all of you. <laughs> I'm such a great personality. We should feel some humility and some compassion. And that uh, will come in the form that we, if we see someone who's a loud, a big mouth person like Keishi, we have some compassion for them. We pray for them. 
Okay. Want a piney rada? You want to come here? Okay. Uh, is a Kesha demon is uh, he's represents the uh, proud of being a devotee. Pride, pride yes, sir. A pride of being a devotee. Um, and you also mentioned that the Kesha means somebody who makes a, who has a big mouth and it means that he makes a loud, a loud noise. But uh, for example, maybe um, I just wonder it about other uh, aspects of this Kesha demons in our heart. Uh, if you're not really making a big noise, but you're proud <laughs> of being a devotee. And maybe you don't you don't speak loudly and you don't advertise your your things, but you still have this uh, proud. So is it also cashy or it's another demon? <laughs> um, just right at the top of my head, I would say that, that Keshi comes in different degrees. And the, the way we want to drive Keshi out is by giving respect to everyone and by having humility. And we may see in our heart, by the mercy of Thakur Bhaktivinoda, by the mercy of Gurudev, and, and hearing pastimes like this, if we see qualities like Keshi within ourself, then we should drive those things out. And we, we, the way to do that, Sanatana Goswami says in Brihad Bhagavatamrita, is by giving humility, we should cultivate our humility with our body, words, and, and, and activities. In three ways, we cultivate humility. And especially, we, we give respect to the devotees. And one way we can do that, too, is by closing our mouth. <laughs> <laughs> by closing our mouth and by learning to listen, by giving other people a chance to speak. And especially if they want to speak, maybe they want to speak Krishna Kata, they feel inspired, or even we're associating with non-devotees on, on book distribution as something. We see someone really wants to talk sometimes. Sometimes it's good. We don't want to waste a whole bunch of time and listen to them for hours, but sometimes it's good to listen to them a little bit and, and show some appreciation, some kindness for that. Something else, Prabhu? But even there is also a very fine, in my understanding, even in the name of humility, there's a very subtle, fine line there that can give a lot of, uh, how do you say, fame, because humility attracts also to many people. And someone can play that also. I don't know for how long, but uh, that even is dangerous to how to detect that. That will be the most difficult thing, because humility can bring a lot of popularity. And then this particular person of course, Krishna will always know. You cannot cheat Krishna. But maybe if you want to spend more. So it, this happens many times in society devotees. We see that, that someone uh, misidentifies. They, they think that, that, that uh, fame is, is part of bhakti. And it's an important part of bhakti. And that I should become famous. Otherwise, I can't really preach. And, and even they've convinced themselves maybe that I actually don't want this. But I, but I need to have this thing for this or that. So that's another kind of Keshi also, that we may be trying to assert ourselves as being very, very humble. So how can we avoid that? First of all, we have to be able to see it. When someone's sick, the first uh, stage of their uh, path to being healed is that they realize I'm sick. If you, if you don't believe you're sick, if someone tells you, look, man, you look really bad, no, nah, I'm fine. I'm not sick at all. Then where is the hope for you to get any treatment? You won't go to see a doctor. You won't accept anything. The first thing is that we have to see that. But we can't see that. Bhaktivinoda Thakur says that cheto darpana marginum. In the beginning, this darpana, this mirror of the heart, is so dirty that we can't see anything in it. It's just black. But as the margin, as the cleansing process goes on from chanting, then little by little we can see ourselves in the beginning in terms of an ashram dharma, where I'm at, oh, I should be married, I, I should, my nature is a brahminical nature, my nature is a vaisha kind of mentality, whatever. We begin to see ourselves in a vague way, and then as we, the mirror becomes more and more cleansed, we can see ourselves and we can also see our faults. 
So that's our process. By chanting, those faults will become clear to us. But especially, uh, uh, Sri Raghunath Das Goswami describes in the seventh verse of Manasiksha Pratistasa Drishta Sapacha Ramani Me Vidina Tethit. Sadatvam Sevatvam. We have to constantly, if we have this pratista, this desire to be famous, and, and, like Keshi, and assert ourselves amongst the devotees, then this, the, the cure for that is that we should constantly render service to the great devotees. And that implies also, as we may speak later, this is such a big topic, we could go on this for many weeks, actually. Uh, it implies that we may accept chastisement from those devotees. And that chastisement is a kind of mercy. Otherwise, we may really just float off in the sky thinking I'm so such a big person. To be willing to be yeah. Glenn has a couple questions. Is there a demon for those whose pride comes in a form of false humility in which they try to be the worst one? I would say that's also a kind of Keshi, where we try to be the best in anything. Prabhupada once told the devotees, you're not the most humble, you're not the most anything. <laughs> you're not the most fallen. <laughs> Meaning that their self-deprecation is not true. Yeah, many times we see that in the society of the transcendentalists. Sometimes we see it in ourself. This evil desire is there to become famous and appreciated. And we see if I'm really humble, then people will appreciate me. So we try to act very, very humbly so people will appreciate us. Another question is there. Like this point, or comment, there is a misunderstanding without being famous. Oh, he likes this point that uh, there's a misunderstanding without being famous. I can't preach. It's not preaching. It's some obnoxious thing in the name of, of, of prachar. But prachar means special achar. It means someone who, who's, whose behavior is very, very good. It means, prachar means someone who uh, teaches by their example. Literally speaking, prachar, we, we translate it as preach, but literally it means someone who, who spreads something. Prachar means to spread, it also means to nourish. It means to spread, it means to nourish by my example. Okay, so we'll stop there and we'll continue this discussion if you want to come again at the same time on Friday. Thank you all very much. Grantara Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai.